Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. I am uh, looking at doing video two in a uh, several-part series on hemodynamics, hemodynamic monitoring, specifically the invasive aspects of hemodynamics and hemodynamic monitoring, be it an art line, arterial line, be it a central venous catheter, or uh, be it a pulmonary artery catheter. We're going to talk a little bit about those uh, three modalities here in a little bit. So the first thing I want to talk about is just a circulatory system. I just want to get everybody on the same page. Uh, I understand there are probably people uh, with different types of background and different levels of understanding of hemodynamics coming to this site. Uh, so it's not my intent to insult anybody's intelligence uh, necessarily. It's my intent to get everybody on the same page uh, and to get everybody intuitively understanding what's going on. Because if we can develop some sort of intuitive understanding then it'll be a lot easier uh, to understand what what I'm talking about when we get to all the, all the numbers and all the quantitative uh, stuff that invariably comes from uh, a discussion on hemodynamics. So if you guys can imagine here, what I've done is I've taken the circulatory system and I have really oversimplified it. So I'm just going to go ahead and label some of the components here. So right here I have my uh, right atrium. I have the right ventricle, I have the left atrium, and the left ventricle. Everybody can appreciate those anatomical structures. Um, so what I have is we'll start at the venous system. Um, so what I have right over here is the venous system. This is the venous system. So I have deoxygenated blood coming from the body. So all of this here is the body or the systemic circulation right here. So I'm going to start right over here in the venous system. What can we expect from the venous system? Well, the first thing that we need to expect is that we have a low pressure, that we normally should have a low pressure a low pressure in the venous system. Now, uh, so I'm looking at the vena cava here. The, the venous circulation e eventually all ends up in the right atrium of the heart. The right side of the heart accepts all circulation or all blood from the venous system. And we consider that blood deoxygenated even though there is um, some oxygen and, and some of the hemoglobin is bound by oxygen, uh, the venous content, um, we can just say for the, the sake of simplicity at this point that it is deoxygenated. It is low pressure. Its pressure is low. And again, we need to be very, very clear that I need to have a pressure gradient for this whole system to work, and hopefully that will become evident here in just a little bit. Okay, so goes into the right atrium, and then from the right atrium, the right atrium pumps it into the right ventricle. And remember, the atria accepts the blood, and, and the atria are very important uh, because what they do is they pump blood down into the ventricles and they preload the ventricle. The atria loads the ventricle up with blood. And there's something called Frank Starling's Law of the Heart, which you may or may not have heard of before, and basically what that, that refers to is the ventricular stretch. And you can think of the ventricles, both the right and the left, as a rubber band. And when I stretch the rubber band, let's say I'm going to shoot somebody with it, I pull the rubber band back a little bit, I preload it, put some tension on it, and then I let go and it flies off. A very similar concept occurs with the right ventricle. If I can preload the right ventricle, I can stretch it a little bit by loading it up with blood, that ventricle is going to be more inclined to pump beat a little more vigorously. Um, so that's the job of the atria is to accept blood and preload the ventricles. The blood then goes through out of the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery through the lung where it is oxygenated and then we have the pulmonary vein that goes back to the left side of the heart. Blood enters the left atrium. The left atrium takes that blood, pumps it into the left ventricle, preloads the left ventricle, 
<clears throat> and then the left ventricle pumps the blood out to the body. The systemic circulation, the blood goes where it needs to go, and then it comes back via the venous circulation. Okay, so what we have here is kind of a pump. <clears throat> we also have some valves that, that are going to become important a little later on. And the way I remember all my heart valves is kind of by a vulgar saying called toilet paper my ass. And that's kind of what I have to do when I use the toilet. You take the toilet paper, my ass. So the first valve that we encounter between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. It has three cusps. It's what we call it a tricuspid valve. <clears throat> the second valve between that, that, uh, that separates the right ventricle from the pulmonary artery is the pulmonary valve, or what we know as a semilunar valve. <clears throat> the third valve is the mitral valve, which separates the left atrium or the left uh, atrium from the left ventricle. The mitral valve, toilet paper, my mitral, and then the fourth valve, which separates the left ventricle from the rest of the body, is the aortic semilunar valve. So those are the valves. Let's talk about the pressures. So I have low pressure here in the venous system. <clears throat> low pressure here. Once it enters the right ventricle, it gets higher. Okay? Higher pressure. Low, higher. Goes through the pulmonary circulation into the left atrium. A little higher yet. And when it enters, uh, as it exits the uh, left ventricle, we'll say that it's at its highest, right around here, okay? So here is my general gradient. I start very high as the blood leaves the body. It's high in the systemic circulation. And then as it, tra as it goes through the systemic circulation and transitions to the venous circulation, it goes from high pressure to low pressure, and then I have a gradient that helps move the blood along. I have a driving pressure, if you will, a gradient. And then it starts off low, higher, 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 highest, low, higher, 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 highest, low, and so on and so forth. So it is very important that we recognize that depending on where we monitor our pressures in the circulatory system, I'm going to expect a, nor a normally high or normally lower pressure. <clears throat> okay, guys, I'm going to cut it off here. Hopefully that uh, makes some sense, and we're going to start talking about those modalities in just uh, on the next video. Thanks for hanging in there.